Jonathan Davenport dominated at Atomic on Sunday night, but that doesn't mean that the race was not without its shining moments. There were a number of them. Specifically, we got to see a really good battle between Mike Marler and Jonathan Davenport with around 35, 36 laps to go in the 50 lap feature. We also got to see Devin Rand systematically work his way through the field and achieve a top three finish. Unfortunately, he got stuck behind RJ Conley in the closing laps and was not able to really mount a challenge on Davenport. Davenport and Mike Marler. Before we get into this, I'd like to ask you, please hit that subscribe button, hit that bell for notifications so you don't miss any of our future videos here at John Trent Racing. Let's get into this here. Um, with about 36 laps to go, uh, we had some really interesting racing here between Jonathan Davenport and Mike Marler as they got to the rear of the field. You can see RJ Conley there is in that number 71 C car. Let's take a look at what happens here and how Mike Marler was able to steal the lead for a couple laps from Jonathan Davenport. Let's take a look. Marler gets a huge run coming off three and four. It snags the lead right there at the scoring loop. And then obviously traffic playing a huge role here. It was unclear uh, how, <laughs> where Marler was going to go, where Jonathan Davenport was going to go, where Lawler was going to go, where RJ Conley was going to go. Really, really exciting stuff here because you just didn't know what was going to happen because you had all the lap cars kind of bunched up there. And then the leaders really got bunched up too because Jimmy Owens got into it as well. Uh, but it would Jonathan Davenport would eventually... Uh, come out on top just a lap later. He performed this excellent move, uh, jetting to the outside in turns one and two and getting a massive run down the backstretch to reclaim the lead from Mike Marler. Let's take a look here. You can see here, Davenport really aims up on that top side. Huge, huge run. Marler tries to get up there and block it a little bit, but he's just too late there, and Davenport would get the lead, and he would not look back the rest of the race. Uh, we did have uh, an interesting battle that would develop a couple laps later for second place. Obviously, they're still in that lap traffic. You can see Lawler is still there. Davenport hasn't even worked past him two laps later. Uh, but this was a close encounter here uh, between Mike Marler and Jimmy Owens. Let's look here as Marler slides up whoop, right there in front, in front of Owens. So some fun, exciting racing here uh, for first, second, and third. And then obviously you see T-Mac is right there as well. And so is Bobby Pierce right on the edge of your screen. So really good racing here with about 35, 30 laps to go. Unfortunately, what would end up happening is we would have a caution. Uh, Boom Briggs would spin out with 33 laps to go, and that would kind of reset the field and uh, really kind of take away a lot of that exciting action. So it's a shame that we had that caution come out. I would have loved to see them continue to go green from here because I think this might have been a race that could be the uh, the best of the, best of the year if it had kept going that way. But unfortunately, that's not how it happened. We had a caution with Boom Briggs with uh, 33 to go. And then we really didn't get going after that. Josh Rice, Josh Rice would uh, go up and over the cushion coming out of two, and he would spin out with 29 laps to go. And then we had this kind of close encounter right here as uh, Rice and RJ Conley got into each other right in front of uh, Jonathan Davenport here as he is uh, kind of really in control of the race, getting back to the rear of the field here after that previous uh, previous caution. Um, so let's look here and how JD is able to just miss this right here. Let's take a look. JD, obviously right on your screen. They're wrecking right in front of him. JD's able to go slip right past them. Really close, close call there. Uh, and then, <laughs> But it almost it almost ended his night. Uh, if they had just come up a little bit higher on the track, that could have been a really bad, bad deal for JD, but he was able to uh, avoid that. So good, good on him. And then while we had this caution here with the rice wreck, uh, Hudson O'Neill would actually come in. Uh, he had two flat tires. At least, at least it looked like he had two flat tires. I saw them change the, the left rear and the right rear. And then also Garrett Smith came in. Hudson O'Neill at the time was running seventh. He would never recover from that pit stop with 20 to go. Neither would Garrett Smith. Both of them would end up mired back in the field. Uh, and then uh, we did have a, a, a good challenge here. As I said at the beginning of the video, Devin Moran did really work his way through the field uh, systematically. Really, they actually we really got to see a lot of him, a lot of him driving because there wasn't a lot happening in the front because JD was kind of running away with it, except for that like five six laps there uh, with what 36 uh, 30 to go. But Moran, he was able to get past McCready. He was able to get past Bobby Pierce. He was able to get past Jimmy Owens, uh, but he was not able to get past RJ Conley here at the end and was unable to get past Mike Marler. Marler did a really good job of taking away 
Devin Moran's line. Moran had really found something around the bottom. I think he had the best car around the bottom. No one else was really able to do anything there. That's how he worked his way around. Everyone else was kind of working through the bottom there. Uh, and he tried to go to the high side of Conley, and it just didn't work out uh, because Marler for the, I don't know, it was like three or four laps, I guess, really kind of took away that bottom line from Moran. But let's take a look here. At, uh, at how uh, Moran had to go to the outside of R.J. Conley while Marler was able to go to the inside of him and make the pass, in, and Moran just was not able to do that. Again, there's three laps to go. So you can see Moran just wasn't able to really run off the top there. Uh, he tries to dive down in, into the bottom here, but uh, even then he had to like let off right there. You see Conley kind of still kind of taking his line away, and uh, that really kind of ended his, his hopes of really challenging Davenport and Marler uh, for the win. And then Marler just was never able to get close enough to, to J.D. J.D. did a good job of kind of gapping. Uh, between himself and Garrett Smith, and then obviously you see Hudson O'Neill there towards the end of the end of the end of the pack there as well. Um, but JD did a really good job of managing the race uh, at that point, and he would take home the win. This is how they finished. This is according to my race pass. Jonathan Davenport obviously was your winner. Mike Marler came in second. Devin Moran moved up eight spots to finish in third. Jimmy Owens dropped back two, finished in fourth. Bobby Pierce uh, lost uh, two spots as well, finished fifth. McCready uh, recovered from, uh, I guess, a little bit of a disappointing debut in the Rocket one, finishing 11th at Brownstown. He finished sixth tonight at um, Atomic. Nick Hoffman finished in seventh. Ricky Thornton Jr., uh, finished in eighth. Max Blair, a solid, solid run for him. Up eight spots, finishing in ninth. Garrett Albertson was your hard charger. He moved up 13 spots, finished in 10th. I believe he took a provisional to get into the race. So uh, had a good car, just didn't really do a good job in qualifying. And then the heat races uh, really kind of put him behind. Uh, I think, yeah, I think he like spun out, I think, in the heat races. And that really kind of set him back. Um, I mean, I, I think he struggled in the B main, obviously, but uh, moving up 13 spots, really good run for him. Dalton Wilson, 11th. Spencer Hughes in 12th. Tyler Erb came home in 13th. Brian Shirley in 14th. Carson Ferguson in that Paler Motorsports car moved up four spots, finishing in 15th. Adam Stricker in 16th. Brandon Shepard, really disappointing run for him, finishing in 17th. Uh, Tony Jackson Jr. finishing in 18th. Dennis Erb Jr. in 19th. Boom Briggs in 20th. Uh, Ross Robinson in 21st. And then Hudson O'Neill. As I said, he had to change those two tires. Never was able to recover. Finished in 22nd. 14 uh, positions uh, to the negative there. And then Garrett Smith also pitting at the same time that Hudson O'Neill pitted. Finished in 23rd. He dropped back 13 positions. Uh, RJ Conley actually moved up five spots. Finishing in 24th. Did a really good job there towards the end of the race. Uh, you can see he was kind of keeping pace with those leaders. Uh, obviously, Moran was having trouble getting around him. And so was Marler there for a little bit as well. And then Brent, Brandon Smith was in 25th, Corey Lawler in 26th, Daniel Adam in 27th, Josh Rice just did not have a really good night, uh, multiple spin, spin outs, finishing in 28th, and then Drake Troutman, I think, had a mechanical failure after uh, that early caution, an early caution for him, finishing in 29th. So that is how they finished at Atomic. Like I said, I thought that this could have been, could have been potentially race of the year candidate if we got to keep them going, if we didn't have... That spin by Boom Briggs that brought out the caution with about 30 laps to go because we were getting some really, really exciting racing there between JD, between Mike Marler, between uh, Jimmy Owens. You had McCready getting in there. You had Bobby Pierce creeping into the picture. Uh, we had almost, almost a five-car battle for the lead. There was a ton of lap traffic. We were going to see how they were going to navigate it. It was really going to be exciting. Unfortunately, it just didn't pan out that way. Boom Briggs spun out. We got the caution and... Uh, uh, really allowed Jonathan Davenport to kind of run away with it. Never looked back, was never really challenged after that. And he just absolutely dominated the field. Congratulations to him. Was a great win, especially I think after he struggled uh, last night at Brownstown. Uh, but tonight he did not struggle. He dominated. But let me know what you guys make, what, what you guys made of the race at Atomic. Let me know in the comments below.